video should cost money. Okay, Sorry. I'm just I'm just saying that because I'm dropping a lot of value here that has really changed my life. So you better use it for your own good. It's Kirsten and welcome back to the Confident Dancer YouTube channel. Today I'm going to give you the video I wish I had when I was younger, which is I'm going to talk about five things you can practically do to improve your chances of becoming a professional dancer. If that's something that you want, or at the very least, if you just want to take your skill to the next level, I would highly recommend following these points. Some of them will be simple, some you've probably thought of before, but at the very least it's going to validate that you're on the right track, and then some you might not have heard before. So here's it. My little guide and I hope you enjoy it. So number one, it's really to put yourself in an environment as much as it's possible in which you are surrounded by dancers who are dancing at the skill level you want to be and also with that, speaking of environment, put yourself around and working with teachers who do have an understanding and experience in the professional world so that they can really guide you and also hold you accountable to the standards of the professional world. That was absolutely irreplaceable in my journey personally. And believe me, I didn't have like crazy, crazy, amazing pre-professional training from the time I was 12. I actually did dance at a small studio that was pretty recreational, honestly, until I was 17 years old. But I was very fortunate that I was able to dance a lot. My teachers let me double up on classes. They let me take morning classes with some of the professional dancers in the tiny professional company that also had a student company attached, which I danced with as a student. And so I was able to dance a lot and I just remember that even though I wasn't surrounded by a bunch of pre-professional super high level competitive dancers in my day-to-day -day classes but what I did have is I would try to get into summer intensives that were as prestigious as I could manage every single year and I would like really really soak that in and remember like what were the best dancers in my class dancing like what were the kind of things that the teachers were saying what did they pay attention to like I would literally take notes, put them in my little journal, and then hold myself accountable to that throughout the year when I wasn't around that training all the time. So yeah, definitely as much as you can, put yourself in environments where you're dancing with dancers who could give you that inspiration, that push, and the insight to say like, oh, okay, those are things that they're doing well, I'm going to do that too. Or work with teachers who are trained and have experience at the caliber that you want to dance at so that they can look out for you, that they can push you and hold you accountable to the level you want to dance at. That's going to be super, super important. And I understand that that can be very difficult dependent on your time, your financial situation, where you're from, all these things. I understand that that can be one of the greatest barriers to entry for a lot of dancers, but there are definitely ways around that in learning as much as you can online. I remember that YouTube was just barely becoming popular when I was a young dancer in my early teenage years. And I remember I would watch in detail every every ballet video I could find. Like I would type in ballet videos into the search box and I swear I had watched all of them for like the first three pages in the search that came up. I was studying those things from the age of like 12 and trying to see like, oh, what do they do that I'm not doing? You can hold yourself accountable and learn a lot and gain exposure through online learning. I mean, it's not going to get you as far as being in person every day in like, sure, a top level school. That's irreplaceable but that can help and it does get people places. I, I do want to say if you're already discouraged about this point, I do know dancers who received great training at their local studio and they just worked really hard and they didn't move away from home at 14 to go to New York City and they still are having a great professional career and they're beautiful dancers. So you don't have to necessarily move away from home at 13. I ended up moving away from home at 17 to finish my last year of high school and then I did a gap here so I could train at the Houston Ballet Academy. That was personally absolutely instrumental to helping me have a professional career. I changed and improved so much, like so much in that short amount of time. So do be encouraged that even if you need to just take a gap year off to train after high school or go to a university where there's a good dance program, it's not like if you're not perfect at 18, there's no hope for you. So please hear me out. We do live in an age where it's not like it's over for you if you're not like professional ready at 18. Now that does come with its own 
baggage, as some of you may know, with the, the whole like somewhat scammy traineeship conundrum that the dance industry has going on right now. That's a whole other video where just really, really well trained dancers who are good enough to be in the company are doing unpaid work for like three years and then they still don't get a paid contract. But at the same time, it does end up having a, a little bit of a benefit where dancers who wouldn't have the opportunity to get those extra years of training after high school are able to have a professional career because there is a little bit more wiggle room where it's not like it used to be in the generation before me it was still very much like 18 years old if you hadn't made it by then it's over for you so now there are more training options and a little bit of an extension on the timeline so don't be discouraged if you're hearing this and you're like Kirsten I can't go to SAB at the age of 10 don't worry there are still options, but I still do stand by point number one. Point number two is to really, really, really get analytical, like study professional dancers and look at the details of what makes them different than students. I swear I did this so much as a student and it was incredibly helpful. The problem is so many times dancers use this to beat themselves up, to get really discouraged and to say, oh my gosh, I'll never be like that. I know it's easier said than done, but please don't do that. Use it as an opportunity to act like you're a detective and you are really looking at their dancing through a magnifying glass and seeing like, what are the little things, the little intentional things that they're doing artistically that make them different than students? Because believe me, there are so many 12 year olds out there who could do like five pirouettes, but they're not professionals yet. Why is that? Whereas a lot of professional dancers I know just tend to do solid doubles, not many more than that. Like you don't have to do quadruple pirouettes to be a professional dancer. As long as you're a beautiful and consistent turner with about two to sometimes three turns, that's fine. So I see all these competition kids at a really young ages doing tricks that even some professionals can't do, but there's a reason why the professionals are in companies and the kids are not. Well, number one, because they're kids. Number two, other than that, it's not all about the tricks. It's about the little tiny details artistically and technically that take maturity and a lot of training to get. But I know dancers who put in a lot of work and a lot of training still not embodying those details that make a dancer stand out like, oh my gosh, you're a contract ready. And I think it's because they haven't been really analytical. I remember watching the Houston Ballet perform when I was like 15 or something. And I remember watching them and I was so enamored with how they dance. And I'm sitting in the audience thinking like, there's something different about how they dance and it's not just the turnout or the feet or the tricks. It's definitely not that. It's like, there's something else. And like, an hour into the show of Sleeping Beauty, which is a hundred years long, no shade, kind of, um, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it hit me. They dance with so much clarity, like they make their movements so precise and clear and like big to where a person way in the nosebleeds and the companies who paid $19 for their ticket can see what they're doing. And I realized that at 15 and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna implement that into my classwork you get to be a detective like that too, no matter what your goals are. I think it's so fun. So don't use those videos and all this stuff we now have online, all these resources to tear yourself apart or get discouraged. It is a gift. And so use it to be a detective and actually take in the inspiration for yourself. And a little tiny side note to that is you can get inside of the minds of professionals. I mean, I even have videos like this. Some of them are years and years old, but you can look at my playlist called Dancing Professionally. And I have some videos about how professionals think differently than students, how they dance differently, how they take class differently. I have videos on this. I mean, I did some of the learning for you so you can just watch that and take those synthesized lessons in because because it's not just about studying how professionals dance, it's also about looking at their mentality, what they prioritize, the artistry, how are they artistically different, and also like how do they dress, what do they wear. It seems inconsequential, but I cannot tell you how important it is to look at those detailed things because honestly, when you are going into company auditions, if you show up in like a black camisole leotard with pink tights and a black skirt and your hair in a straight back high bun, you can dance beautifully, but with how the human mind works, I mean, I've heard facts like we form judgments 
and assumptions about people within seconds of seeing them, not even talking to them or taking time to watch what they do. So impressions are made very, very quickly. And you can be a beautiful dancer, but if you dress like that in a company audition, it's like someone is going to have to override the assumption you just gave them that you look like a student. And they just don't have time watching like a hundred people dance to really like get past that first impression a lot of times. Now, obviously that's a generalization. If you really, really are like a stunning dancer, they'll keep watching you, maybe. But why would you want to like give them that hoop to jump through when, you know, it's already hard enough? Oh my gosh, there's something in my eye. So the way that you present yourself even is something that's important to study in your demeanor and what you wear and how you do your hair and things like that. Now, you don't have to be obsessive about it like on a daily basis, but I'm just saying, look at it holistically and really embody and model what the professionals are doing as much as you can. It's very helpful. Hey dancers, I hope you're really enjoying the video so far. I just want to briefly mention to you that if you've been struggling with mental blocks like perfectionism, comparison, self-doubt, or just generally noticing that your mind is causing like self-sabotaging behavior, like holding back when you're really wanting to impress or getting super nervous before a performance, in any case or in any way that that's showing up for you, if your mind is holding you back from feeling as happy and as confident as you want to be as you dance, and also if it's holding you back from performing your best consistently, then I want to invite you to consider the Confident Dancer Coaching Program, which is my signature mindset coaching program for dancers that helps you to totally do an overhaul on your mindset and learn the practical mental tools, frameworks, and techniques to build healthy, authentic confidence and really train your mind to help you perform your best consistently as a dancer. So if that's something you're really interested in, I do offer a free 30 minute consultation. So if you want to just try this out, talk through your goals and challenges and see if this work is a fit for you, I absolutely welcome you to visit the link below, visit my website, learn all about my coaching services and book that free consultation. There is no harm and nothing to lose, so just go for it. So I hope you're enjoying the video and let's get back into it. Step number three, I feel like very few people talk about this in a nuanced way. I could just simply sit here and be like, know your strengths, but I'm going to phrase it a little bit differently. Know your, what I call your features and benefits. Okay. That sounds weird because it's marketing language. It's like we're talking about a product and in a way it's not that we're products, but we are selling a service. Everything really is a business when you get down to it. Here's what I mean by this. What the features and benefits are in a service is knowing the difference between saying what you can do and then communicating clearly why that matters. Practicing an understanding of how this ultimately matters and creates an impact for the end user of your service. Now I'm getting, maybe you're like 12 years old watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, what is she talking about? <laughs> this is just where I'm at personally. I'm very fascinated by business and marketing. And when I've learned more about the art of marketing, I've learned that we can all benefit from knowing about marketing because as dancers, we are marketing ourselves and our service that we do, which is dancing to companies. And so if we know a little bit about how marketing works and how to market ourselves, we can have so much more success, I think. And so what's important to know is that instead of just focusing on your strengths, which so many dancers get asked that question, like, what are your strengths? And we go, oh, like so many dancers lock up and freeze when I even ask them that question because we're judging our strengths according to someone else. Like, oh, if someone else is really good at that thing, that means I'm not very good at that thing. And it doesn't work that way. And I find that that's such a defeating way to look at our strengths. And instead, when we say, what are our features and what are our benefits, it causes us to ask questions like, what are the qualities that stand out in my dancing as valuable? And valuable to who? The directors? How is it valuable to my peers? How is it valuable to the community and the audience who, will, who I will eventually dance for? Having this mindset of like, there are things that I do and I can offer as a dancer that actually do make a difference. And you don't have to be the best dancer in the world for those things to still make a difference. For example, I can hire, you know, the best plumber in Austin, Texas to fix my toilet. And it's probably not going to make a huge difference if I hire the, you know, the absolute best 
plumber ever compared to like a plumber who could just get the job done. Sure, there might be a difference. There's also going to be a price difference, but the whole point is both can provide value. And so when we're looking at our strengths and we have that mentality of like, oh, if someone else is really good at this, then that means I can't really say it's my strength. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of companies out there to dance for, plenty of audiences and audiences that have all sorts of tastes, companies at all sorts of different levels. So you get to look at what are the features that stand out in your dancing? Is it your artistry, your expression? You're very good maybe at having like energy and joy and passion or like attack in your dancing. Or maybe you're very good at being elegant. Maybe you're good at precision or maybe you're good at more technical things. Like let's say you're a dancer who has really nice lines to dance in a tutu and you're really good at the classics or you're good at core work. Whatever that is, look at what are those things you're good at and also include non-dancing things like your professionalism. Do you learn quickly? Are you really nice to work with? Are you very consistent in your performance? These are all features that provide value. And I wish I knew earlier in my career or in my training that it's so important in confidence building to focus on my features and then follow up with that question, how does this actually make a difference? for the people around me, my directors, the rehearsal directors, choreographers, my peers, the people watching me. That is so confidence building to actually think about it for a second and be like, you know what? Every day that I show up with my professionalism that I'm very good at having, that makes rehearsals run better. And when rehearsals run better, it takes some stress off of the director. Awesome. I'm actually a very consistent performer. That is such a valuable thing for directors. They need to be able to trust you to consistently deliver. Or, you know, maybe it is your technique. You know what? I would be great in Swan Lake and that would just up level the quality of the company. Think about how what you do can create a positive impact for others. And that is such a different mindset to have because you're not just thinking about you. You're thinking, oh, I want to be generous in giving this thing to the people who can benefit from it. And that is so confidence building. And to follow up on that point, focus on enhancing those features and more generously sharing the benefits of them to others instead of just always focusing on fixing your flaws, hiding them fixing what's wrong with you, you know, because the thing is we all will always have things to improve upon. And yes, it's good to continue to improve upon those things, but ultimately the removal of those flaws isn't going to inherently like make you special or make you stand out necessarily. It's what you do have to offer and what those strengths are that really will make you shine. So focus plenty of your energy on building those things up. The next thing is to really focus on how you like to dance and developing artistic taste. I love talking about this with dancers, especially dancers that I coach as they prepare for things like audition season, because in this world, it's so easy to just constantly be like, well, how do I need to dance to make someone else happy? And that's understandable. It's good to like read the room or be versatile according to like what style of choreography you're being asked to do. Versatility is great and adaptability is great, but if that's your default mode of like constantly being like, how do I need to twist myself into a pretzel to make someone else like me? You know, how do I need to dance to be what other people want me to be? That's such an insecure energy to come from. And it's, it's also very distracting. And instead of constantly trying to see like, what do other people want and how do I dance that way? It is such a confidence boost to instead switch that mentality, especially towards your later years in your training, to ask yourself like, okay, how do I like to dance? Like, what is my signature sense of artistry? What is my artistic taste? What's so great about that is it helps you to actually enjoy your own dancing, which is so contagious, by the way, when a dancer really enjoys what they're doing. Oh my gosh, it is so magnetic to watch because when you see someone having fun, it's just hard to not feel some of that fun through them vicariously. So instead of just always focusing on like, how do I need to dance to make other people happy? Do develop a sense of like, this is the way I like to dance. These are the qualities I love that feel very authentic to me personally as an artist. That is so important. And again, yes, do balance that with knowing how to be versatile and knowing how to be adaptable. That's part of the fun too, like experimenting with different types of dancing, but still know like, what is your signature artistic taste? The last point here is to interact with people. And here's what I mean by this. Actually talk to your teachers. Talk to your teachers. Talk to even 
master class teachers, you know, who come in every once in a while or connect with, if you go to a summer intensive, like talk to the teacher that you have most often and don't be afraid to ask for feedback. Tell them like, okay, this is something I want. This is something I'm working on. Would you mind giving me some feedback or looking at this and helping me understand like my turnout, my extensions, whatever. Ask for help. And I know like we want to be respectful. Obviously that's important, but so often dancers take respect to the next level of being so shy that they don't allow themselves to be known. And the way the world works in general is we often get opportunities through interaction, not just being the best, but really being the most known and the most visible. Again, we're back to marketing again. Man, th this video should cost money, <laughs> okay? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just saying that because I'm dropping a lot of value here that has really changed my life, so you better use it for your own good. Here's what's so important. When you actually let your teachers know, especially the teachers you have a lot, like here are my goals, and you tell them like, here's the kind of company I'm looking for, and ask them questions. Do you know of any companies that's not on, you know, show them your list of companies you're looking at and be like, do you know any directors from these companies or do you have any insider knowledge about how these companies are? Do you have any you would recommend? Are there any that aren't on this list that you would recommend I audition for? Y'all, I did this at the end of my university experience before I graduated. I actually did get to set up a meeting with some of my instructors, my professors, and say like, here are the kind of companies I'm shooting for. I would love your insight. I know that you know some dancers who are in those companies. Do you have any insider knowledge? Do you have any tips for me? And actually how I ended up getting my first contract was because I had a professor tell me, she looked at my list of companies I was looking at and she was like, this one should be on your list. I mean, she was really blunt. She was like, <laughs> I know two dancers who are there that I actually trained and you're a better dancer than them. So you need to go audition for that company. So I was like, okay, whatever you say, that sounds great. <laughs> and that's the company I ended up dancing for. So be known, interact, ask for help, ask for feedback, let people know where you're wanting to go and what you need help with. And especially if you have the right kind of teachers who are actually wanting to help you, which good teachers should want to help you, especially if you're being respectful <laughs> and honoring towards them and their time and everything, show appreciation, you know, that is where the magic really, really happens. Be known, network, even talk to other dancers about your goals and all this stuff and get some intel from them. Like what schools did you like that you've been to? What summer programs did you enjoy? What do you know about the second company? Like talk to people because you absolutely will discover insider information that's really important and helpful and also opportunities. You'll be connected with opportunities that you would not be otherwise if you just stayed in your own bubble, only relying on on Google and only just going to auditions that you've heard of before. So interact. Okay, dancers, this video was jam-packed, full of value. These are the things that genuinely made such a big difference for me in my pursuit of a professional career. So I really hope that you put these into action, take them to heart because they really can make a difference for you too. Let me know what you think in the comments. Definitely give this video a thumbs up so more dancers like you can see it. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.